Do people hook up on trail? You're a quite handsome guy, so you might have had an encounter or two. This answer might surprise you, but... So, a few days ago, I got hit up on Instagram by this guy named Rune Raven. He told me he was going to be through hiking the Appalachian Trail in 2020, and he wanted to make a collaboration video where he, the one who's going to be going out soon, asks me, the one who's already through hiked the Appalachian Trail, a bunch of dumb questions so that other people who are wondering about these same things don't have to. At first I thought it was kind of weird, like I don't know who this guy is, but I was like, sure, you can send me your video, send me your questions. Little did I know that as soon as I opened up the video he sent me, this dude is fucking hilarious. He's from Denmark and he's never through hiked before, so if you're going to be through hiking this year, another year, or if you're honestly just like curious about the Appalachian Trail and the culture that surrounds it, this is going to be helpful and it's also going to be entertaining because not only will you have like my stupid jokes to deal with, but I'm telling you like this guy is just, he's a riot. So with that said, let's uh, just get into the questions here. Let me introduce you to my new internet friend, Rune in Appalachian Trail 2020 hopeful. What's up Hiker Trash? My name is Rune Raven from the channel Rune Raven. And I'm here today to ask all the dumb questions about the AT so you don't have to. First of all, I'm from Denmark. Some of these questions might seem redundant, stupid, or even really, really dumb to you, but they do have great importance, especially as a foreigner. How did you get to trail? I mean, how did you get from Atlanta, where probably most of us will end up, and then get from Atlanta to Springer Mountain? I was extremely lucky in that my parents were able to actually drop me off right at Amicalola Falls State Park. So <laughs> they're honestly amazing. My parents drove all the way from South Carolina where they live, which is why I have that flag up there. Everybody always <laughs> asks me about that. They drove all the way from South Carolina up to Potsdam, New York to watch me graduate college and then immediately turned around and drove me all the way back down to Springer Mountain to start my through hike, all within the span of like three days, like absolutely amazing. I know most people's parents don't love them as much as mine love me, obviously, because I'm really amazing. So if you're a normal person and you don't have that option, <laughs> You're definitely gonna have to do some more research before you take my word on this, but I think that there is a way, maybe like a train you can take from Atlanta to Gainesville, Georgia. And then I've heard that there's shuttles from Gainesville that will take you to the approach trail. Again, double check that, but I think I've heard people say that before. You should be able to find that information online, no problem. When did you get into the groove of the AT lifestyle? I know it takes some time to like really get into it. I was wondering when did you find your like hiking legs? For me, I really felt like I was getting into the groove of things when I left the Smoky Mountains. So that was probably about 270-ish miles in, maybe around like hot springs. By that point, I had started to do like my first couple 20 mile days. I had gotten through like the first big like milestone of the trail, which is the Smokies in my opinion. And I don't know, I was just feeling good. Like at that point, the nerves had kind of worn off because I was pretty nervous when I first started and I was just getting more confident, I guess. Is there anything you regret? No, I don't really have any regrets, honestly. No regrets. Did you have any troubles with animals, like mice in the shelters, bears on the trail? The only place I really saw bear were bears, bear, I don't even know, <laughs> Shenandoah National Park. I saw a couple, I had a couple bear encounters in Shenandoah National Park. Nothing dangerous, you know, just your typical bear encounters where you don't run away from the bear and you just give it the space and you know, everything's fine. As far as like mice go, um, I never really was too bothered by mice. Like you definitely shouldn't be sleeping with your food in the shelter. I would say like the sketchiest, most dangerous animal encounters that I had on my through hike were definitely with rattlesnakes. I was very close to stepping on a rattlesnake right when I was going past the North Carolina Georgia border. Well, about 45 minutes later, the snake finally moved, but he's still right in there. He just rattled at me again a minute ago. So I think I'm gonna wait a few more minutes and then just hope he's not close to the trail anymore and go for it. Um, I saw five rattlesnakes in total. I saw two copperheads. Whenever you hear that rattle or like see one of those mean ass snakes, it's never comfortable, that's for sure. So I would say look out for snakes, always be watching in front of you. And of course, research bear safety, what to do with bear encounters and all that stuff. It's not nearly as dangerous as you would think. I was doing your business, you know, 
the business ever any problem for you especially starting out was it something that you have to overcome like going out and digging the cat hole and stuff like that it's kind of weird talking about shitting to a camera where i know it's going to be seen by like potentially a couple thousand people or whatever but no i didn't have any problems there i know that some people do i don't really know what to tell you there because i'm not a doctor and i don't really have any experiences to talk about so I, again, like, I think you'll be fine. It's just shitting people. You, you do it every day. In fact, you're probably doing it while you watch this right now. Did you ever think about quitting and why? So I actually kind of answered this question in a previous video I did with my friend Flossie, where we talked about the Appalachian Trail and I'm a fucking savage. I never thought about quitting. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly never thought about quitting. I kind of made a joke about it in that video, but it's true. Like I never thought about quitting personally. A lot of people do. In fact, I would say maybe the majority of through hikers do think about quitting at certain points. So I'll just say if you know why you're hiking and you have like a solid reason to be out there, if you're really determined, then you can definitely overcome any of those thoughts of quitting. And while I'm plugging videos here, I might as well plug my mental challenges video that I made, which I'll put up right here. So if you're curious about how to kind of stay strong and beat some of the mental challenges that come along with through hiking, then you should definitely go watch that video. Do people hook up on trail? I'm in a relationship, but you're a quite handsome guy, so you might have had an encounter or two. <laughs> this answer might surprise you, but no, that never happened to me. I mean, if you think I'm handsome now, you should have seen me while I was actually on trail. Cue the picture. Do you think anybody would have wanted to hook up with that? Like, what the f <laughs> As far as other people, I mean, I'm sure it happens sometimes, but it's not really that big a thing. If anybody has any experiences with that, maybe leave a comment below. Don't get me like in trouble or anything, but Curious to hear some thoughts on that. Were you ever scared? Like doing a thunderstorm or meeting a big animal on trail or just anything else? The only time I was scared was that rattlesnake encounter thing, like I said. And I guess there was a couple sketchy thunderstorms, but it wasn't that bad. I would just say the rattlesnake thing was definitely pretty scary. And if you were scared, do you think it would scare you today or do you feel more prepared for the thing that scared you now? Hell yeah, it would still scare me today. I don't fuck with rattlesnakes, folks. What do you miss the most from the trail? And what did you miss the most while being on the trail? I think the thing that I miss the most from the Appalachian Trail, this is gonna sound so stupid, but honestly is just eating stupid amounts of food without having to worry about like calories and stuff. As far as the things I missed while I was actually on trail, I think the like the biggest thing for me was just I really missed having like my own space and my own belongings. Like, yeah, I have my, my backpacking gear, but like I missed having like a computer and being able to do things on there. I missed having like a guitar or my own bed and like a bedroom and, and things like that. So just, just, I really missed having like my own stuff and my own personal space. Is it easy to send yourself resupply boxes? Coming from someone who do not live in America, it seems like it should be easy, but it does confused me a lot because in Denmark we have the most awful, 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 awful postal service. Personally, I would recommend that you stay away from resupply boxes if you can. I know there's certain circumstances if you have like special dietary needs or something. There are so many grocery stores along the Appalachian Trail that you're just gonna do yourself a huge inconvenience if you're relying on the post office's shitty hours to get the same food you could just buy at the Walmart across the street. How many shoes did you go through? I went through six full shoes and to make this easier for everybody that's three pairs. <laughs> he, he, he said how many shoes so I just had to make a dumb joke about that. <laughs> what was your best experience on the trail? And what was your worst experience on the trail? I think my best experience was a tie between making it to Harper's Ferry and just feeling super accomplished because I made it to the halfway point in the trail and making it to Vermont. As you guys know, despite the South Carolina flag, I am from Vermont, live in Vermont, am literally in Vermont right now. And so just like making it to my home state felt really good. Honestly felt almost as good as making it to Katahdin. And honestly, I think my worst experience was Again, probably that rattlesnake situation. Maybe I need to make a video on that, a separate video. And then I also had a really bad hangover in Duncannon, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so honestly, I'm pretty lucky that a hangover was like one of my worst experiences on the trail. Did you have a trail on me or were you a part of different trail on me's around the way? <laughs> 
trail of me. <laughs> Not trying to be a dick. Um, it's pronounced tramly. That's what most people say. And personally, as you've probably heard me say on Trail Tales before, I think the term trail tramly is just like so cringy. I <laughs> it's tramly. Oh my god, my tramly. For those of you who might be confused by all that nonsense, basically he's asking about the people I hiked with, how often I hiked with other people, and I hiked with one person, Mullet Mike, my boy, for almost the entire trail. We met on Springer Mountain the very first night, and unfortunately, he had to drop out in southern Maine. Like, he made it super, super far. I honestly want to do a video about his story sometime. And besides him, I hiked with my boy Flossie, my boy Indy, and this other dude <laughs> named Classic. Also, shout out to my boy Baker Bocorny. Cornbread is his trail name and his now wife, Jessica, whose trail name was Little Bear. I mean, those are just a couple of the people I hiked with. You're gonna meet lots of different folks. This is something that a lot of people worry about before they actually get on the trail, but I'm telling you, as long as you're not like a huge fucking douchebag, you're gonna find plenty of people to hike with. What did you eat in general? I know you love your hot sauce. Did you have anything that you just couldn't live without or something that you just really, really enjoyed? Hot sauce, like you said, Milano cookies and potato chips. It's kind of f***ed up that those three things were like staples in my diet. Like, those things should probably not be a staple in anybody's diet, but... Who's your favorite hiking YouTuber? Like, is it really Dan Baker? You can tell me, man. I keep your secret. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. This guy is just f***ing hilarious. Oh my god. I honestly have so many favorite hiking YouTubers that... Like, I couldn't even name all of them, but if I just had to pick one specifically, it's gonna be my boy Syntax77 because he was like a huge inspiration for me when I was first getting into backpacking. He's been doing videos like long before it was cool and trendy to do this stuff, so he's a homie. He's never done a through hike, but he has plenty of miles under his belt and he's just a really good dude. I've gotten to interview him two times on Trail Tales now, which you guys should definitely go listen to. What all, who was the most annoying on the trail? <laughs> um, the most annoying like thing or people for me on the trail might catch some slack for this honestly, but I really didn't like it when people yellow blazed or like skipped miles of the trail and, and still said they were through hiking and all this stuff. It's pretty controversial. It doesn't really matter that much. I will be the first person to admit that and looking back on it, I, I really wish I hadn't worried about it so much and, and let it annoy me. But if I'm just gonna be honest, yeah, Yellow Blazers wasn't a big fan of that. And what is the dumbest thing you did while hiking? I think the dumbest thing that I did on my through hike was me, Indy, and Flossie went into Kent, Connecticut with the plan of staying in town and taking a zero with absolutely no idea where we were gonna stay. And it wasn't like there was options really either. Like there was no hostels here, there was no like hotels that were reasonably priced and close to the trail. So we just went into town, we just immediately went to a restaurant and bar, had a couple beers, and then we were like, okay, let's just go camp somewhere. Like we'll just go find some, some trees to hang our hammocks or whatever, which was a terrible idea because at this point we were a little bit drunk, it was dark, and there was absolutely no places that were not like blatantly illegal to camp in. We wandered around the town for like an hour and a half trying to find somewhere and eventually we just had to walk back to the trail, <laughs> re-hike like a half mile uphill south, so the wrong direction. All of that could have been avoided if we had just not gone into town with this stupid idea that we could potentially just camp in the woods like in town like that's it's not gonna happen bad idea first of all thank you carl for letting me come on this channel and ask you all the dumb questions a lot of us newcomers are trying to figure out there's probably a million gazillion trillion more questions that a lot of people out there have these are just my questions alone so don't hesitate to ask carl down in comments if you have any more questions i'm like 100 percent sure that he'll get right back to all of you to answer all your questions and remember to subscribe to carl hates hiking He's doing his best thing and like this video if you enjoyed this video. I'm really bad at these end card things, but hey man, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to Kyle Hates Hiking. See you on the other side, man. Happy hiking, everyone. <laughs> he even told you guys to subscribe and hit the like button. I wasn't kidding. This guy is just hilarious. 
So go check out his channel. I'll have a link to that in the description. Thank you, Rune, for setting all this stuff up. And of course, thank you, the person watching this right now for clicking on my stupid thumbnail or whatever. And yeah, happy trails out there.